So what you usually do, if you, if you arrest one of these guys and send them to the court, you have to wait two years. Okay, well, I'm, 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 I'm sure military, people, yes. Military, I, need, I need to stop you. I am, I'm, against, I'm sure. I am against the military, uh, uh, civilian court, the military court. Okay, that's, that's no okay. Question well, I'm sure we're going to have a, a lot oh, of right. discussion Sorry on this that. subject. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Now let me please ask Heba Marayev to speak for the motion. This military isn't interested in real reform because this military doesn't understand what reform means. On March 9th, 190 peaceful protesters were arrested, were taken to the grounds of the Egyptian Museum. They were beaten, they were whipped, they were given electroshocks, the 17 women included. The next day on March 10th at the military prison, seven of those women were, given, uh, were subjected to forced virginity tests. In this context, that amounts to sexual assault. The military uh, subsequently formally denied this, but we have off the record admissions, we have admissions from reliable sources within the military that this occurred, and we have an implicit recognition to us when we, in a meeting with the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, that this was something that they were investigating. One of those women has filed a complaint before the military prosecutor and another complaint before the Council of State. And until this day, that complaint hasn't gone anywhere because the military prosecutor is saying he's still waiting for the results of the investigation from the military prison to arrive. What we have here is a situation where the military has not only conducted exactly the same abusive practices of the Mubarak regime, which led to the January 25th uprising in the first place, but we also have the second element which caused that anger on January 25th, which is impunity. Until this moment, not a single military officer has been investigated or prosecuted for the acts of torture which took place not only on March 9th, but on subsequent cases, for the excessive use of force which occurred on a number of different occasions and protests leading up to the latest and very tragic incident at Maspiro where army vehicles ran over 21 individuals. Not talking about how that started, that in and of itself is evidence. I think beyond this, what this shows, what this impunity shows is that the army doesn't realize that a break with the past means that people were longing for the promotion of respect for the rule of law. What they wanted was to end the position of the police above the law, the feeling that police officers could get away with it. And yet instead what we have right now is military officers who are in that same position. We have a military that doesn't understand what rule of law means, what reforming this country means. Instead, they not only reactivated the emergency law, they expanded it to beyond what we had under Mubarak. 12,000 military trials of civilians, a position that every human rights organization is completely against because no civilian should be tried before a judge who responds to his military superior. And we have masses of examples of individuals to, given to very short trial. The failure to prioritize the rule of law, the failure to actually reform the police to address police abuse, to investigate any police officers for torture. All of this shows a desire to protect the status quo and not to really reform the system. Abu Marayef, thank you very much indeed. Uh, you said the army wants to protect the status quo. Who was it that pushed out Mubarak? if it wasn't the army? The army, I believe, made a conscious decision, which was clearly something that they'd been thinking about for a while. They've said this in subsequent statements, that they didn't like Mubarak's yes, but plans they were the ones who did over. it. They, they were, of course. They were the ones who of did course. it. Of course. It wasn't was, the people in the street. This, it was the military. The people in the street initiated out. it, and this is partially a soft coup, which is the problem that we're facing today. This was in the military's interests, and since then, they've portrayed themselves as protectors of the revolution while okay, trying to give... Okay, but how much reform do you think you would be seeing in this country if the military had hadn't brought it about and wasn't uh, actively promoting it. How the many political parties, how, much, how many prisoners would you, would, would, would you still be seeing? Political prisoners in jail? Well, we have how many banned parties? But how many banned right parties now. would there still be not if the military hadn't brought about the new situation? Not questioning the party situation? establishment. The turning point was June and July of this year. Initially, the military was giving some space. And then people started criticizing them, and they didn't like it. So they started arresting bloggers. They started summoning people on charges of insulting the military. They started interfering with the media. I think they've already admitted that they needed to change their culture. But, well, but, they but, but they've, but their they've had, well, they them, haven't, no. they've only had nine months. No, and they're planning to stay until June 2013, and we can't afford this. We can't afford to have Maspiro happen again. But, but look at what has happened response. in the nine months that they've had. Look at the people who've been what put on happened? trial. What the old dictator and his family put on trial. Ministers brought before the courts on charges of corruption. I mean, how much can you do in nine months? There hasn't been a process of institutional reform. And who else is there anyway? And the problem here is that the military is centralizing all decision-making power in Who hands. else is there? 
civilian anyway. government. The civilian what government. civilian government? The caretaker government where reform-minded ministers have been unable to actually implement And is that the why the people are voting 90% in favor of the army? The army has that's been what very they, successful that's what they at think betraying of the parties, itself. Isn't it? Speak to any political activist, anyone in a political party who's been the, trying to negotiate with the SCAF over the past months to actually get the SCAF to listen to what's in the interest of political parties. The SCAF does not consult. The SCAF does not involve people in its decisions. And the SCAF is clinging to power. And All this right. is the fear. Abba Marayev, thank you very much indeed. Now please let me ask uh, Gamal Abdul Gawad Sultan to speak against the motion. Uh, we, the motion is about reform, and I, uh, I believe we, uh, we shouldn't deal with reform in the abstract terms. We should be dealing with, with reform within uh, a specific uh, background, a specific complex political and social reality uh, in this country. This reality that was created in the aftermath of the 25th of January revolution, those revolutionary developments early in the year, uh, unleashed a number of major trends. I would identify three of them, and within them we can uh, 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 judge uh, uh, what kind of role is played by the, by the army in this, uh, in this environment. Uh, uh, one trend is political reform. Uh, there is uh, uh, approaching democracy uh, after the collapse of the Mubarak's regime, the dismantlement of the, uh, at least uh, momentarily, the, the, the machine of oppression of Mubarak's regime and the repoliticization of large segment of the Egyptian society, the political landscape in Egypt has changed and uh, definitely uh, a possibility of reversal, of going back to some sort of authoritarian regime like that of Mubarak is, is impossible and, and the democratization is a must and inevitable in this country. Another, a second trend here is the rise of the Islamic forces of, of all kinds, moderate Islamists and radical Islamists. And I would, I would say that Islamists have been the biggest winner of those changes and developments have taken place in the country early in the year. And the third trend is the uh, bringing the military back to the center stage of politics in Egypt. The, the military in the past decades in Egypt have been always there, but somewhere over the horizon now he, it is back to the center stage. Uh, uh, trend number one is, is positive, uh, 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 possibility for democratization. The second two trends, the other two trends, Islamism and the military, I would say are not really conducive for democratization. The major challenge that we, as we are facing in this country is the is the weakness and the fragmentation and disorganization of the uh, genuine democratic civil forces in the country, liberals and left, and uh, some, uh, 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 some sort of, uh, of balance, uh, of role of balancing is needed, and this is the, the, the role that is the military is playing okay. in Egypt right now, uh, 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 leading it towards some sort of a gradual reform in a safe way, not to allow okay. uh, some specific actor to his, uh, uh, exercise hegemony over the rest of the country. Professor Sultan, thank you very much indeed. Um, where is the military leading the country when it keeps changing the dates of elections and refuses to lift the emergency powers, which was their promise and was the uh, major demand of the revolutionaries, wasn't it? Well, there is a learning, uh, learning experience the military is going through, and also the other political forces you're are saying, going you're, through you're, you're them saying that the, the same learning The military experience. don't understand what they've been asked to do by the revolution. The, the, th the thing here is, uh, if, if I look at the demands that were made at the military early during, after the revolution, there were demands to, uh, to extend the, the, the transitional period for the military they to stay in power for They elections to civilian now. rule in six months. They, uh, and there was demand and the criticism made by liberal forces and many uh, people of reform mind uh, wanted the military to stay longer in power to allow the new parties a bigger chance to organize, so is, to reach is, for the grassroots. But this is just 1952 no, is, again, isn't it? The military comes in, promises a swift transition to democratic civilian rule. Six days, decades later, you're stuck with the military. Luckily, still. luckily, uh, it's a, just the same, a isn't replica it? of 1952 is impossible. The Egyptian society has changed. There is no room now for a new authoritarian regime in Egypt. But, but what are people to make of the fact that they keep giving deadlines and then changing them when they feel like it, uh, this is without consulting the, anybody? Uh, this is the, uh, a part of the messy situation we are living in in Egypt right now. And definitely there is, this is part it's of just the management strategy. It's a messy situation. It's a bit more than a messy situation. The army messy. knows perfectly well what it's doing. It's been in power for 60 years. I don't think so. I think uh, believing that somebody all Might mighty the most experienced politicians in this proved country. wrong with the failure and the collapse of the Mubarak regime. 
uh, Egypt is so complex to be controlled by any one entity, including the army, and assuming that much part to the army, I think will not be fair to understanding the reality, not to the army. Itself. All right, Professor Sultan, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, can I have a comment, please? Um, um, can I ask you to have a comment in a little while, oh, in the sure. course of the questions? Sure. Otherwise, we'd have to no, change no, the format and That's give it to everybody. Thank can I just remind everybody that the motion we're discussing tonight, this, this House believes the Egyptian military is not interested in genuine reform. Um, we're ready to take your questions. Um, there's a lady at the back there. My question goes to, the, to, the, to, the, to those against the motion. How committed is the military to paving the way for any economic reform? Because we've seen that poverty is one of the major factors that impedes the transition to democracy. And as a result, we haven't seen that at all. We haven't seen any signs of any kind of support the military is giving or any roadmap that's allowing to happen economically on economic ground. Okay, okay. Professor Sultan. I, 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 I don't think we should expect and we should demand uh, economic reform from the military. The military should be here for the briefest period of time possible. And this is up to us, to the, to the uh, civil society and political, uh, different political ideological forces to debate what kind of political reform you are needing. Political reform is a very big word. You're saying is the military shouldn't socialist? bother with the economy. I think, and we shouldn't demand that from them. It is they rule the country. As, who is? They rule the country. They shouldn't no, no, be they, bothered about the economy. Their mission is to They've take us They've got 40 million from, poor people this in this country. Our, their job is to take us from here to a functioning political representative system. This is their function, and it is well, our role. We won't get role, there unless role. people have food in their stomach, will Just we? keep the things going, re, uh, uh, mean, provide food for people, keep the economy going, but reform towards which ideological lines, which policy lines. This, will, this is not something that we should... Okay, I want the questioner to, to come back and have a say on that. What, what do you feel about that answer that you've got? I'm not convinced at all. And as we've seen right now at the moment, right before elections, we've seen a lot of demonstrations that are taking the same form that, uh, of you know, their strikes more than anything else, including the ones inside the actual military of um, interior which is pretty interesting that, yes, people do need to be guaranteed somehow. We need, they need to see a roadmap economically for them to be able to even think or make up their mind about which political party